people always ask me how many lessons it's going to take before they pass their test and we have to deal with this constantly i often answer i've got more chance of picking your correct winning lottery tickets for this week in today's video we're going to have a little look at this subject According to the DVSA, or Driving and Vehicle Standards Agency, or the people who run the tests, the average amount of lessons that people take is 45 hours. And that doesn't include the 22 hours of private practice on top of that. The first thing that I'm going to talk about is finding the correct instructor. Now, I've dealt with this in a previous video already. Um, it's really important that you do find an instructor, not necessarily that just all your mates have been learning with, although recommendations is really important, but it's important to find an instructor that you gel with. It could be that the instructor who's taught all your mates, you don't sort of get along with and therefore that these lessons that you're going to have you're not going to enjoy um, there's always going to be sort of like a negative atmosphere in the car when you go for your lessons and quite quickly you're going to be finding that these lessons are going to be mounting up and you're not going to get best value so finding a correct instructor that you gel with is really important How old you are also has a big bearing on how many lessons you actually take. People tend to learn quicker when they are younger. So if you've left your lessons until you're in your 30s, it's probably going to take you a little longer. We do have pupils who come to us who learn to drive in their 60s and even 70s. And usually it takes them a little while longer, but just because you are 17 and just turned, doesn't mean you're going to fly through your lessons instantly. There are many other factors that you have to take into account. Does whether you're male or female have a bearing on how many lessons? In my experience, no. But what I do tend to find is that the lads who learn to drive seem to have a bigger interest in the cars. Therefore, their technical knowledge about how they work and what goes on tends to be at a little higher level. But if I had uh, a male and female pupil who had exactly the same technical knowledge, I couldn't split them personally. I don't think there's much difference. The stats may say otherwise, but for me, nothing in it. Does it matter whether or not that it's a manual car or an automatic? Does that affect the lesson amount or the number of lessons that you have? Well, Yes, obviously it does. If you are driving an automatic, the first probably, um, I would probably say eight to 10 hours are much, much, much easier. The car control part, in other words. And then after that, everything's quite similar. It's about observations and learning the things that go on on the road. So if you had two equal pupils, one who drove a manual and one who drove an automatic the automatic one would obviously be a little quicker because that initial part is easier however in my experience and i have taught in automatics for many 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 years the people who tend to go for the automatics are less able not every single one but generally the less able so just because you are choosing an automatic doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to come in under that 45 hours. A lot of the time what I find, because the people are less able, they still take approximately the same amount of hours.
One thing that does affect how many lessons you have massively though, is your disposition or what you're like as a person. Are you chilled and calm or are you really anxious? This for me is probably one of the main things that affects the length of time it's going to take you to get that full license. If you're really nervous and fear takes a grip, you're less likely to take things in, you're less likely to learn and obviously you're going to be learning to drive for a long, long, long time. I do also find that people as time goes on seem to be getting more and more anxious of what goes on on their lessons. I think it's that mindset of learners always being in the way as you can see I'm going on about that again but it does play a massive part about the amount of lessons or towards the amount of lessons that people actually take. I've already touched it again on another video or touched about it on another video where um, one of my pupils who I was teaching before lockdown and hopefully he's going to come back but his uh, one of his parents had a poor attitude towards learner drivers and that was rubbing off on his lessons he was really nervous of people behind and he felt as though he had to escape all the time only because he said one of his parents used to shout and bawl at learner drivers so if you can chill out it's going to lower the amount of lessons that you actually take. Another thing that affects lesson numbers, for me it's a big thing as well, is lesson continuity. Are you one of those people who has lessons quite sporadically, once every three weeks, or have you jumped between different instructors because if you are for me you're much more likely to take many more lessons and also I will add you're much less likely to pass first time when a pupil has lessons consistently without a break or a long break I usually say two weeks there's no problem if you go on holiday but try not to take a break from your lessons for any longer than a couple of weeks because if you do it interrupts that learning process and in my experience people who are regular with their lessons with me tend to pass first time so that's a big thing that maybe you haven't thought about Are you obsessed with manoeuvres on your driving lessons? Do you keep on badgering your driving instructor to do a bay park or a parallel park? Because pupils who do that, in my experience again, are more likely to take more lessons. You may think, why? Well, let me go through the reasoning behind this. If you start doing exercises and manoeuvres before you're ready to do them you're going to be less skilled you'll then maybe take five lessons to do a reverse bay maneuver and to know it pretty well well if you actually learn to drive and learn to control the car and learn to do your observations and learn all the skills needed to do this reverse bay park when you come to do it it won't take you as long so a little bit of advice if you learn how to drive properly first these maneuvers that you come to do in my opinion won't take you as long and it might save you a little bit of time while I'm talking about students as well are you a student who is willing to learn on your own terms? What I mean by that is, do you really want to learn or are you being forced into learning? The students that have a desire to learn off their own back 
in my opinion and in my experience, are going to be more committed to the task. They tend to do more theory work. They tend to watch more videos and be a little bit more conscientious about their driving. And that's nothing but a good thing. You're going to learn quicker if you're like that. So if you're being forced into learning to drive, it doesn't mean, and it, it won't mean that you can't do it, but maybe just expect a little bit longer learning process. I hope that's been a help for people. I hope that now it's given you a little bit more of an insight into exactly what is going to be involved in passing your test and how many lessons. Because it's a tough one. I know people want to get through as quickly as they can, but it's not always possible. I hope everyone's okay and staying safe. Take care and I'll see you all soon.